Welcome to Community Voices with Kari Lissa Thorne. And I have with me today, Carmen Perez. And we're going to be talking about effortless living and removing the chaos from your life. So welcome, Carmen. Hi, Carly. How are you? Well, I am very happy to have you with me today because I love eliminating chaos from our lives. So first, I'd love to find out how did you get involved with your program, Eliminating the Chaos from Our Lives. What was your inspiration behind creating the program? Well, after I had a personal crisis and experienced chronic illness for a few years, and I was starting to come back into the workforce by planning Girlfriend Gataways. And what I started realizing is that I was meeting a lot of women who were where I was and experiencing the chaos that comes in a life when you're trying to be that working 24-hour woman. And so I started sharing tips um, with the people who were going on my retreats for basically how to calm the chaos in their lives, how to reclaim their time by being more productive and creating space so they can start taking care of themselves. And the more and more research I did on this and I helped myself come back from, you know, laying in bed, being disabled um, and getting back into my life again and started really figuring out all the different things that we could do to make our lives better. And I started sharing that. And so the Chaos Detox program was just born out of basically the experiences that I had with chronic illness and getting my life back together again so I can start reengaging and helping others calm what I could see was very easily cured by using what I call the Thriving Productivity Blueprint, which I teach in the Chaos Detox. So the program that you created, the, the Chaos Detox program, from what I understand, has seven keys. So I thought it would be really nice for the audience if we walk through the seven keys. So why don't we actually do that? Sure, absolutely. So the first key of the chaos detox that we teach and it's the first key to the thriving productivity blueprint is thoughtfulness and that's all about being mindfully present to how our personality our thoughts and behaviors affect us and those around us because it's so important to be aware of where you are otherwise how do you know where you're going from there how do you know where you want to go I mean I think this need for us to be aware is so important and until you are you don't get that kind of clarity that you need to take action on what you want to do right so that you can dream bigger and do more so that's why we start out with thoughtfulness <laughs> I think thoughtfulness is a very important thing I think too many people actually uh, I could put this they actually are blind or have blinders on and aren't aware of their surroundings or others so I think that's a very important place to start so thank you for actually sharing about thoughtfulness so yeah. what would be the second key um, the second key is regulate and in that key what we really focus on is critically taking a look at your to-do list so that you're doing the right things for you not just the things that people tell you to do by automatic default you just go into action doing them these are taking the actions on your list and making sure that these are things that are going to help you achieve the things that you want to achieve. Now, I think that would become the list of, I call, do it, delegate it, or delete it. Too many people aren't, are not afraid to delete things from their life or from their lists. I think that's a really important one to focus on. Yeah, and actually in that module, when we go through that, we also talk about the um, art of saying no because that is where a lot of us get hooked up we don't want to say no to people we don't want to disappoint them and we don't want to deal with any chaos that might ensue as a result of our saying no so that's one thing that I think is really important so we do dive into that as well it's just so that you can be comfortable with saying it or finding another way to say it that you can be more comfortable with you brought up a very very important point the art of saying no is so important and also being authentic in your saying no and being honest in your no. Too many people make up lies when they say their no. Please do not do that because then you feel guilty in your no. Be honest in your no and do not be afraid to be honest in your no. 
Exactly, exactly. You know, if people love you, they're going to get over it. They're going to understand where you're coming from. So I wouldn't, I shouldn't say don't because I know that's hard to control our response to something. We can't say, well, I won't feel guilty or tell me not to feel guilty. But one way to help you not feel guilty is by not making everyone's problems your own. You know, and that's something we tend to do, especially if you want to help people. We can't help but take on their responsibilities emotionally so they kind of hang us up so that again is just something that I thought was really important that we dive into um, in calming our chaos and reclaiming our time um, well the third key to the chaos detox is a sign and I love this one this one is my one of my favorite uh, keys because we are taking all the things that you need to do that you focused on creating we're saying these were the things that were priority to you and now we're gonna assign protected time to actually take action on those things and or delegate the things that you don't need to personally do and this makes huge huge impact on your day-to-day -day life I mean every time I go through this I get goosebumps thinking about it because that is where the magic starts to happen for me somehow when we start putting pen to paper and really planning out the time that we're gonna spend on all the things that we want to do and then when you do them and you start to see you're clearing off those lists I mean it's empowering I don't know how else to describe it you just feel so good because you know that you where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there and everything that you need to get done is done so again allowing you to focus on where you are and really enjoy that moment knowing hey everything's done I don't have anything to worry about right now and what's really great about that realize when you delegate, delegate to people that know more than you. I mean, there's some people that literally the things that you are not so good at love doing those things. So you're actually giving a job to someone that actually loves to do it and actually does it better than you. So it's a win-win. <laughs> Why are you Absolutely. doing things that you're actually miserable doing them and you're not good at doing it? So it's a great thing to actually take off your plate and gives you more time to do the things that you're great at and you love to do so it's like yay right <laughs> then it happens more effortlessly right you're not putting so much time and effort into something you don't enjoy and maybe you even struggle with it you know so yeah it's great to just give it up a lot of times I tell people look I know no one's gonna do it as perfectly as you right no matter how well you communicate your needs but to delegate it to someone who's going to do it at least 80% as well as you are because I think that will really make you happy and let you know that you can trust and release that control that it's okay if it's not 100% the way you would do it but 80% is pretty darn close and I know personally you enjoy that experience when you walk in and something is done just as if you would have done it and the freedom that you have to really focus on another priority something else that you did not have that something else that you did have to personally attend to so it's incredibly freeing and you really do get to do more like these are the two ways that you can do more with your time by focusing on exactly what you need to do when you need to do it and only that right no multitasking just focusing on that one item and then delegating it those are the only two ways to do more in less time okay so it's one thing that we really dive into and in controlling that impulse to multitask is so so important so I really felt I needed to be part of the blueprint and I love it when in case anyone's hearing lawnmowers I love it when the the garden service decides to come when I decide to do a show anyways <laughs> what would be the wonderful fourth key the fourth key is a um, delegate I'm sorry vigilance what's really incredible while we're covering the fourth key of the thriving tub uh, What's really incredible when we're covering the fourth key of the Thriving Productivity Blueprint is we're really focusing on ways to help you focus on what's important. Because what happens when we sit down in front of our computers and we have our little notifications going off and we have Facebook counts going up and we could see the email count, right? We're distracted. How could you not be? So we create an environment together that works for the way that helps you be the most productive you can be. And so we do away with all of those little distractions while we're talking about that fourth key. It distractions, exactly. Distractions can take away from your productivity. 
It can take away from your actual focus. You can make errors. It's really important to stay focused on what you're doing because you can make a very vital error that can actually cost you a project. Can it literally cost you literally something really vital. So really make sure you're staying focused on what you're doing. I can't impress upon you how important that is. I mean, it can actually, in, in some cases, cost someone's life. If you're out in the field doing something, you never know when you're not focused, it can cause an accident, texting while you're driving. I mean, I can't begin to tell you how many things can go wrong when you're not truly focused where you need to be focused. That is just so imperative that you're focused. Multitask, multitasking really can cause problems, so stay focused. Yeah, it's so important that, you know, these are not presumptions, these are not opinions. I mean, they have done so many studies around all of this and what throws us into chaos and what throws us into stress and overwhelm and frustration and resentment. And these are part of the things that do it and that's why we're addressing them because of the overall detrimental effect it has on your overall health. When you are running yourself ragged and you have your hands in 10 things and you can't deliberately focus on one thing because of all the distractions and we have over 3,000 messages a day telling us who to be, what to want, what to wear, when to do what, that it's so easy to lose connection with who we really are and what we want to do. It's so easy so that's why it's important to be able to learn, right, to recultivate that skill that we had at one point or another to just focus on what's important and what's in front of us. So the next key to the thriving productivity blueprint is extract, which is about removing the piles and all of the clutter around you so that you only have what's important and what you need and that thing's building up because it happens to everyone. How often do you go through your mail and you pile up your sales papers, you pile up your magazines, and you go through your bills and of course there's a couple things you need to check on, right? So you start creating these piles everywhere. So what's important when you're going through extracting is figuring out what's really important to me, what do I need, and keeping only that. That is another very, very important thing. And I'm going to share and add to this. Your brain talks to everything on your desk whether you know it or not. It recognizes your pen on your desk. It re recognizes the stapler on your desk. It recognizes the books on your desk. It has to, it actually, because visually, it's catching every single thing on your desk. So mind you, the less clutter on your desk, the less your brain has to actually recognize visually what's on your desk. So if you want to be able to be more focused, more productive, make sure your desk is not cluttered. Your brain literally has to actually capture, process everything on your desk. It's just the way your brain works. So, and this isn't BS, this is actually scientific. We, your brain actually takes in everything in, around you. That's what it does. So, um, realize, declutter what is on your desk. You may want to take another table and put it on the other side of your office and make sure even that is piled neatly, organized. But like she said, go through the stuff on a daily every other day or even weekly process and throw out what you're not using. I might even say recycle what you're not using. I prefer recycling. Just make sure you really go through the stuff you're not using. If you're not using, get rid of it. Declutter your mind. Declutter your life. Declutter your desk. Why keep it if you're not using it? Right. Especially, I mean, because it does. It takes up space. Like you said, anything that's around you, you're picking up, you're looking at it. Some things are just triggers for stress, so don't let it affect you that way. Just put them away by taking care of that as soon as it comes in. And we teach you a couple really good strategies, like you were talking about earlier, to do it, delete it, right? But we have the, all these great strategies that you can use and put them into practice so that every time you get something, you follow the same system to get rid of it that it's not another source of frustration saying, oh my God, I have to get this off my desk. I keep on thinking about it. I don't want to continue focusing on that. So again, all of this leads up to just 
reclaiming your time so you can work as efficiently and productively as possible so that you can calm the chaos, calm, calm all that clutter around you so you stop absorbing and wasting your time and energy. These are very limited resources. It's important that you focus on reserving them for what you really want. It's not for anyone else to use but you. It's a magical gift just for you and unfortunately it is limited so we need to pay attention. So the next key is the sixth key to the Thriving Productivity Blueprint, which is learn. And one thing that is incredibly important is to continue learning, to always be expanding, expanding your mind, changing your processes and your skills. And learning is something that helps you do that. And we also talk about strategic learning and taking what it is that are their goals and deciding okay so I have this great goal of writing a book well, I want to learn how to write better well great so by learning and reading books on writing and how to write better that's something that will help you get there without all of that pressure that oh my god I want to write this book but how do I do that how do I make that happen you make it happen step by step by developing a plan and learning is a fundamental part of growing and living and I always say if you're not learning you're drifting behind like you need to keep up and keep your brain active and they even show people who are more active with their brains retain 50 percent more of their memory after the age of 50 so it's so important to just keep up and stay engaged in everything that's around us and continue that curiosity of the world and how it works and exactly because think about it putting an elderly person in a home verse and they do nothing they actually decline and die faster than people that are in a home that is more of an active lifestyle where they get them involved in things where they have they read the newspapers and they have them engaged in puzzles and they actually have where nursing homes would actually debate you know the one and they actually have you know things on the TV where they have they, they uh, play classical music getting their brain engaged they've actually done studies where they put them through PETA scans um, you really do need to engage your brain even if they have them listening to audio, even if they can't speak and they have books playing on tape, their brains are listening to books, their brains are more active, even if they can't speak. If they have them listening to classical music, like I said, books on tape, and they have someone moving their limbs, even if they can't speak and they can't walk, if all these things are being done, their brains are more engaged, their brains are more active. We need to learn continuously so that we can grow and expand. It's really vitally important that we continue to grow on all levels. And I'm going to say mind, body, and spirit because they're all interconnected. Yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. Well, and the last key to the Thriving Productivity Blueprint is self-love, which obviously is one a lot of us have a problem with, although a lot of us won't admit it. We always like to think we're good to ourselves and we make ourselves a priority, but unfortunately, I think we end up at the bottom of our to-do list and we know what happens. We never get there. We never get to the bottom of that to-do list because it just continually grows and evolves the same way that we do. So it's important to make yourself a priority in your life. You are the cog in the machine. If you break down, your whole system breaks down. It affects everyone. Make no mistake. The more you're doing, the more important it is that you are taking good care of yourself. Like the airplane, Stuart is showing us, put the mask on yourself and then the mask on the other person. You know, think about it. It's like a parent, you know, if your child gets sick, if you get sick, you're not going to be able to take care of the child. So it is so important to take care of ourselves and move our bodies and eat healthy. And these are ways to distress our bodies. We really need to learn to start self-loving ourselves and taking care of ourselves. It is so important. So, Carter, it is. what are some wonderful last tips you'd love to leave with our audience because as you know and all my audience knows I always put together a wonderful blog post that has all the links and all your information and we're also going to be sharing your link and spell it out because this is also a podcast but I always love to let you know the person I'm interviewing share some last tips and pointers and um, you know, you and I go way back when we're always talking and I'm on your webinars and telesummits and I always invite you to, you know, write and all these things. So what are some wonderful things you'd love to leave with the audience? 
Well, first and foremost, if nothing else, make yourself a priority and start taking control of your day. Stop feeling like you don't have options. This is your life. You make your options. So not making decisions to reclaim your time and to stay, you know, put your stake in the ground and own that space is what is ultimately going to be what hurts you. You just need to own it and move forward and not think of anyone saying you can't do that. You're too old for that. There's none of that. There's no excuses. This is your life. This is your time. You have one chance. So we have to make the most of it, right? Because that, you know, they say over and over again, if you live right the first time, you don't need another shot. And this is our chance. So I encourage anyone who is feeling like they're trying to do it all but just can't seem to get it all done, you know, to really take a look at these things, to be mindful of what they really want, make sure that they're doing the things that they need to do and the things that they enjoy and that they're making themselves a priority because there is an overwhelming amount of people, over 50% of the population, I want to say it's like 52 or 62%, I'm sorry, um, but either way it goes, it's a very high percentage of people who say they live with chronic stress every single day. That is not okay. This is an epidemic, and I don't know why more of us aren't getting upset about it. I think this is definitely something we need to start taking a look at. And stop being okay with just surviving, getting through our day-to-day. -day. It is time to thrive and to start to take back control of what it is you really want and stop excusing yourself from wherever you're at. Just accept where you are and start moving from there. It's never the wrong place and it's never too late. So I'd love for your fans to get a hold of me or reach out to me at EffortlessLivingOnline.com and that's E E. I'm sorry, it's E-F-F-O-R-T-L-E-S-S-L-I-V-I N-G-O-N-L-I-N-E dot com. Again, EffortlessLivingOnline.com. And I also have a special, really fun webinar coming up where I go more in-depth on the keys um, on August 5th. So please reach out to me and sign up for that too, and we can dig a little deeper into the Thriving Productivity Blueprint and the Chaos Detox Program. And that's going to be on the, um, what's the website for the Chaos Detox? ChaosDetox.com. C-H-A-O-L-A-O-S-D-E-T-O-X.com. And I'll have all those links on my website, and I'll have the embedded video as well as the embedded podcast. So everything will be on my website. And it's been such an amazing time getting to share more uh, quality time with you. So and I look forward to spending more quality time with you as usual. So um, thank you so much for spending that time with me, Carmen. It's been wonderful. I always love sharing things that bring more grace, ease, and joy in people's lives. So I wish everyone a wonderful afternoon, and I look forward to bringing more quality content and guests to you guys next week. So uh, I look forward to that next week, everyone. Enjoy.